In 2023, he was the number one team on Long Island for number of homes sold and sales volume. In 2022, he was the number one team in New York State. Did you guys hear that? New York State for number of homes sold and sales volume. Kat, did you get everybody in here? Because we, we need them all in here. Highest reviewed realtor on Long Island per Zillow and Google. Co-host and co-creator of the Real Estate Protégé. Featured on News 12 Long Island. Newsday's Long Island go-to real estate guru. Dave Ramsey's Suffolk County ELP. Hope I pronounced that okay. One of Long Island's largest no-debt rental portfolios. CEO and founder of Illiterate Millionaire. Crazy story, by the way, I just heard. Real estate coaching and training. Your sales giant. Two-time division. All-American in football. Got to know the guy just a little bit for the past couple of minutes. And I must say that I am very much impressed. You guys have heard the name. My man, Brian Carp. I appreciate it. All right, guys. So I am Brian Carp, the sales giant, a.k.a. illiterate millionaire, a.k.a. mailbox money. I got a short amount of time with you, so I'm going to dive right into it. All right. Let's see if I can figure this thing out. Oh, you told me to point it to the back, right? Oh, whoa. Go back. Next slide. There we go. All right. So... As I was introduced, you guys know I'm an ex-athlete, right? I'm an ex-jock. And to me, the coaches and the trainers that I respected the most and the guys that I really was able to gravitate towards what they were saying to me were literally in the trenches, right? So I'm standing up here, and I want to make sure you guys understand that I am still out there every single day fighting, clawing, and ripping for commissions and for listings, just like every single one in this room. Now, when I was listening to ex-athletes and coaches my entire life, I always looked, what was their baseball card, right? So I'm gonna give you a snapshot of the last five years, right? Because nothing gets me more upset than real estate agents telling me how long they've been in the business for. I don't care, right? I want to know what you did for me now, and I want to know what your production is now. So listing sold, and this is a little old. This is probably about a month old. Over 1,000 listings sold in the last five years. Total volume is a half a billion dollars. Lifetime, over a billion dollars. Now, this is the most important stat next, right, because... Everybody has these flexes, right? They want to be the number one agent in their office. They want to be the number one agent, right, in Suffolk County, Nassau County. Well, this is all that matters. Personal GCI, right? That was the money that the Carp family took in over the last five years, which is $8 million. Thank you. And guys, it's all from something really simple, listing and selling homes. Right now, some of you are like, well, Bri, you got a big team, right, dude? So I'm sure you're just taking a little piece off of everybody. But let me just paint you the picture. 2019, your boy, solo agent, all by myself, with one full-time admin, personally sold 205 houses. Thank you, thank you. Now, 2019, we moved to 2020. I brought on uh, a, a showing agent, did 210 houses, right? And then the story keeps going. 2021, 265 transactions, started building a team, right? 2022, another 210 houses. And even in 2023, we were on track to go very close to 200 transactions again. Hold on, I got a point. There we go. All right, there's your boy's head too. All right, this wasn't meant to be, right? So guys, I wasn't supposed to be standing up here. It wasn't supposed to be me, 
right? So I believe that every single one of us have a book written about our lives, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the book of Brian Karp's life. So my parents, right, Robin and Harvey, grew up in the projects. Somehow, they were able to own one house, right? So your boy grew up in a house. So I thought my God-given right was to own a house. Now, the Karp kids, Brody and Brock, well, guess what? They think their God-given right is not to own one house. It's to own multiple houses. And guess how mom and dad make money? We collect rent, right? And we live off of the passive income coming in from the houses, right? So if you're reading the book, which is right here, for Brian Karp's life, it was to own one house. Today, the Karp family has 20 rentals. 35 doors, and you ready for the mic drop? Not one piece of debt on the portfolio. All right, let's go back to the book the way it was supposed to be written. Barely graduated high school. Guys, the day I left high school, I swear to you, my guidance counselor pulls me aside and says, Carp, listen, I'll make sure there's always a job here for you as the custodian. And listen, that's noble work, right? Your boy's blue collar, and I've done some hustling. But I knew that I was destined for greatness, right? Well, what did I do? I ended up getting a full scholarship to go to college. And your boy graduated with a 3.8 GPA. Wow. All right, let's go back to the way the book was written. Every single one of you has a book. You could change your book. Get out your erasers, right? What was the book? You and your construction worker. Guess what? Your boy was a new construction worker. For nine years straight, I drove into Manhattan and I pretended to be a union construction worker. And I put insulation on a pipe. Picture this, March, February, it's freezing. Your boy is on the side of a skyscraper with overalls on, freezing like this, putting insulation on a pipe. But wait. I decided to rewrite the book. And what does the book say? Number one real estate agent in Long Island. You could rewrite your book, and I'm gonna tell you how. All right, this one. I'm sure there's a lot of people in this room who have decided they're gonna retire at 65. Or maybe even some of you say, Bri, my goal is to retire at 55. Well, let's go over to the other side of the book. Your boy, reach financial freedom at 38 years old. So what does that mean? At 38 years old, the Carp family had more passive income coming in than we needed to pay our bills. I don't ever, ever need to work another day in my life. And I'm still standing up here, I am still waking up at 4 a.m., and I am still hustling my face off. Why? Because I love the effing game. Rewrite the book. Let's see if I got it. There we go. All right. So all of the chapters that I was talking to you guys about, right, there's a way to rewrite it. I almost say there's like, you almost have like a, 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 a way to push in, a way to break in, right? So let's look at the first one, school, right? If you want to get into school, you could have good grades. Well, I didn't have good grades, so let's get rid of that one. You could have connections. Guys, my father, Harvey, worked for Con Edison for 40 years, right? So there was no connections in school. My mother, right, worked for the Chamber of Commerce for our local town. No connections there, right? But you could be an athlete. But you can't just be an average athlete, right? You have to be able to dominate. That's the word you got to write down. Dominate. Right, so I was able to dominate. And here's the last one, and one day the Carp family will do this. You can make a huge donation to the university. But there was no rich uncle, there's no wealth in my lineage, right? So what you have to do is if you're trying to rewrite your chapter and you're trying to break in, you have to be able to kick the door open and dominate something. All right, check your boy out, 285 pounds, okay? So there's always a way in. 
I promise you, in every industry, in every situation, there is always a way in. What was my way in for university? I decided that I was going to be the best football recruit in high school in Long Island. And what happened? I got a full scholarship. Now you're saying, Brian, why wasn't school, why wasn't school, you know, easy for you? Well, today I have a severe learning disability. I have dyslexia. So your boy standing up here, number one real estate agent in Long Island, financially free, and I read on a fourth or fifth grade level. When I go out to dinner with my family, my son Brody, he's 11, he's reading me the menu. When I go on a listing appointment, I have to hope and pray that the home seller does not have one of those houses where, you know, they write the address in script, right? I have to hope that they have numbers there, 2770. Or I have to hope that their neighbor's house is pretty close so I could figure it out, right? That's, that's my life. Now, what I was able to do is I had a tutor go to every single class with me. How did I do that? Well, I was an All-American. I was the best football recruit in my year at all. So the takeaway I want you guys to see with that is if you're able to dominate something, right, you're able to break in. I was able to graduate with a 3.8 GPA, and I was able to get into college because I excelled in athletics. All right. So now, how did I break into the real estate industry, right? That's what you guys must be saying. How did you do it? Well, it's relationships. So I have intimate relationships with every single one of my sellers. You're saying, how is that even possible? Well, true story, about a month ago, I'm at one of those Sky Zone places, right? My son Brock's super popular. He's 10 years old, so he gets invited to all the kids' birthday parties. I'm literally standing there, have my face buried in my phone, right, trying to hustle some deals in between the kids bouncing everywhere, and I literally get tackled. So I'm like, oh, my God, I'm being jumped, right? At 40 years old, I'm being jumped. And I turn around, and it's a husband and wife and two kids that are literally hugging and kissing me. Well, guess what? I sold their house five years ago. Now, for the life of me, I didn't remember his name, but you want to know what I did remember? I remember what he did for a living. I remember what his wife did. He's a police officer. They had an inline high ranch, right? Their mother lived with them. Their mother was way too involved. They bought a house from me in Lake Grove. It was on a cul-de-sac. They got a great deal on it, and I spit all those things right back to him because why? I built an intimate, right, special relationship with them. Now, I've also done the same thing with a lot of the agents who work for me, right? Today, I'm in the process of building one of the largest teams in Long Island. And how is that possible? It's because I have special, intimate relationships. I really care and understand the people who are around me. So we're all driven by different things, right? Number one, money, right? Your boy's driven by money, absolutely. And we'll talk about why I am. Other people are community, compliments, friendships, relationships, right? Love, we're all driven by love, and security. I was driven by security. That's why I had the W-2 job. That's why I was a union construction worker, right? So all of these are different emotions that people have. <sighs> I don't, want, I don't want this to come off the wrong way that you guys are, you know, sitting here saying, well, Bri, you're someone who has zero problems, right? I actually probably have more problems than a lot of people. The biggest thing is that my goals, right, my goals hail into comparison to what my problems are. And the problem is a lot of you and a lot of people that I coach and a lot of people that I train, right, what it is, is it's only about problems. They're thinking about, can I pay my mortgage? Can I pay my rent? Can I pay my payroll, right? How am I getting my next listing? Well, if you're giving oxygen and air to your problems, you're just feeding them. So what I want you to think about is 
Brian Karp is not someone who has no problems. I'm someone who just has these crazy, gigantic goals. And my goals hailed in comparison to my problems. Let me set a stage for you. I'll take the claps. Let's go. All right, I love it. The Carp family, about 18 months ago, purchased a beach house in the North Fork. All right? If I told every single person in this room that I left $250,000 in cash on my kitchen table, and the first person who gets in their car and drives there is going to get it, I guarantee any little problems that you guys run into isn't going to be that big, right? So you guys could literally be pulled over by the police, and I'm sure you're just going to keep going, right? Why? Because you're like, I'll pay that speeding ticket. Even if they arrest me, I guarantee I could be in the salesmobile on the expressway. Your tire could blow out. There could be sparks flying everywhere, and you're going to keep going. Why? Because the goal outweighs the problem. That's the key. You guys have to get these goals that are so mega big, they outweigh the problems. Look at this now. I'm like an expert with this. All right, so let's, let's dissect what my goals have been because I really think these should be the goals for you guys. Legacy. Family legacy is what I have been playing for, right? Financial freedom, family legacy, the Carp family. Number one, the Carp family's rental portfolio. Your boy got into real estate for one reason, to be the inside player to buy a ton of rentals. What you guys have to understand is I'm 40 years old today. God willing, I'll live another 60, 70 years. But my body is not going to be here forever. But what's my legacy is all of these things. That rental portfolio, right, will be passed on to my kids, kids, kids. So Brody and Brock, those two handsome little guys, I put them in the sales car. I drove him to an apartment building that I bought last year. I got him out of the car. And I said, if you ever, ever sell this building, I'm going to come back from the grave and kill you. Now, obviously, I haven't figured out a way to come back from <laughs> dying. But what I want to do is scare them straight. But really what I want to do is make sure they understand that their father, right, put his foot in the sand and drew the line and says, I'm going to change the Carp family. The next thing, relationships. I'm such a big relationship guy, right? With the people who are in my ecosystem, my friends, my family, the opportunity, I couldn't say no when they asked me to speak because I'm able to build a relationship with you guys. So those relationships could live forever because I could teach you something or you could teach me something that I could pass on to my kids or you can go home and pass on to your kids that might live forever. Number three is my all-time favorite, cash flow. God forbid I die tomorrow, guess what? Jessica, the Carp family, the next generation will be just fine because that cash flow will live forever. And then you guys probably laugh at this one. You think that your boy has been doing videos for you? You think I've been doing videos for home sellers or home buyers? You got it all wrong. I'm doing videos for my family. Every piece of social content that I've put out for the last decade is for my grandkids who don't even exist. Why? Because they're going to be able to go back and see how I built this empire. And then the carp name, right? I could buy enough real estate that the carp name can live forever. A few years ago, Jessica and myself made a very generous donation to Stony Brook Athletics. When they redo the locker room, we're going to have a piece of it, and it will be the Carp family area. That's one way your family could live forever. So what, what I want you guys to understand is I, I never wanted to compete. Remember I told you, how did I get a college scholarship? How did I become the number one real estate agent? Was dominating. You have to figure out a way to dominate. 
This is true. I've been writing goals for 20 years. Not one of my goals, if you guys read them, ever said I wanted to be the number one real estate agent. So any single person in this room who is chasing to be number one in their office, number one in their market, or if you want to be the number one agent in Long Island or Suffolk County, you guys are chasing my shadow. I, I never wanted it. That was never an accolade that I cared about, right? All I wanted to be able to do is create enough wealth to buy enough real estate to take care of those kids forever. What you have to do is not focus on everything in the world you can't control. You gotta focus on the one or two things you can control. We can go outside, it might be raining, it might be snowing, right? You may not like who's in the White House, you may not like anything, right? So stop focusing on what you can't control. I don't know who's getting voted in. I don't care. I don't care what happens. I'm not a heartless person. I'm just not gonna focus on anything I can't control. What can I control? Brian Karp's actions, right? My schedule. I can control myself. And then this is a big one, excuses. We all have excuses. You guys are coming up with excuses all day long. Here's an example. My father-in-law, he needed a ride into Manhattan. He's going for a major surgery at one of the big time hospitals. He says, Bri, can you pick me up at 5 a.m.? I wanna be in the city by six. I said, no problem, Pop. But I said, there's no way that if we leave your house at five, we're gonna get into Manhattan in an hour. We better leave at four. Well, I picked him up at four o'clock. Now, it doesn't mean I woke up at 3.45 and threw on a pair of sweatpants and picked them up. That day, I decided to wake up at 12.30. I woke up at 12.30 a.m. Why? Because it was a Monday, and you know your boy's not gonna miss a Monday workout. You know that I have emails that I have to set up with all of my staff, right? You know I have to set up everything for my day. So all I do is I just wake up a little bit earlier. The problem is, is a lot of you guys and a lot of people that I coach and train, a problem comes up and there's an excuse why you can't get what you need accomplished. I thought I was an expert. There we go, all right. So here's the battle plan, right? I'm running low on time and I wanted to give you guys, besides a little rah-rah and a little bit of your boy's backstory, I wanted to give you a battle plan. This, take your pens, take your pencils out, right? Take your iPhone out. This is exactly what I did to dominate the real estate business. I'll let you guys take some pictures. Okay, let's start off. You gotta find a neighborhood. I call it a hood, right? So what did I do? Your boy went out and I decided I was going to dominate one neighborhood. You can't take over all of Suffolk County. You can't take over all of Long Island. You can't take the whole North Shore over or the whole South Shore over. But what you can do is take over one town. So what did I do? I went online and I figured out who the top agent in that town was. And what did I do? I cut her picture out and I put it on my mirror. And every single morning, I would stare at her face. Now, not because I hate her, right? And not because I wanted anything bad to happen to her, but I knew that I needed this more than she needed this, right? So I recommend for each one of you, maybe it's where your office is, Maybe it's where your brokerage office is, right? Or maybe it's where you do the most of your business. But you need to find one hood and you need to take it over. You see the face? There's two faces there, right? This face, guys, you have to brand your business around your face. So there was a, uh, an amazing study that I was gonna say I read, but you guys already know, I'm not gonna lie to you, you're my friends, right? You know I didn't read it. Someone, I probably heard it somewhere or someone read it to me. but. There was a great study that was just done, and they had two similar businesses, right? So business A over here, business B over here. Well, business B had a face and a person behind the business. Both businesses sold the same product at basically the same price. Nine times out of 10, they went with B. Why? Because there's a face behind it, right? So don't think that your boy thinks that I'm like this Adonis or super handsome person, right? The only people who think I'm good looking are my mom and my mother, right? But <laughs> it's true. 
I don't have hair like you, right? I'm stuck with like this. But what I'm trying to make you guys understand is that you have to brand the business around your face and your personality and who you are. The, big, the biggest thing I see is that you can't hide from your face, right? You could always change your name, right? You could always change kind of your hair. I could grow hair, buy hair, dye my hair. I could always lose weight, gain weight. I could change where I live, right? I could change what I do for a living, right? Maybe tomorrow I'm going to sell something else. The one thing you can't change, your face, right? Omnipresent. You got to be everywhere, right? You guys might know me because I have a rap car, right? Well, don't think it's the rap car that allows us to sell hundreds and hundreds of homes a year. That's just one piece of the business, right? Omnipresent is being everywhere. They have to see your reviews online, right? You heard, they introduced me, highest reviewed agent, right? That means you actually have to do a great job of what you're doing and being a good steward and look out for your home sellers and home buyers, right? You have to have social content. They have to see you online. They have to see your signs everywhere, right? They got to see your cars. They have to see mailings. You have to be cold calling. Guys, mega open houses, right? I call them PT Barnum open houses. They're events. You, you may not have 50 listings like a top agent in your office, but what's to stop you from putting out 50 open house signs, right? And I don't put those open house signs, and I see the nods. I don't put those open house signs up Saturday afternoon at 11.30. I put those open house signs up Friday, and I don't take them down till Monday. Why? Because I want them to see this face for 72 hours. Mega open houses. Then what do I do? I call 200 people around the open house, and then I door knock another 100 people around the open house, right? I have big, huge flags in front of the open houses. We give away prizes, right? You guys have to do these. Imagine if you did those every single weekend. I get texts. I'm on the kids because I'm at the second stage of my life, right? I'm literally on the football field trying to coach champions, and I'm getting text messages. Bri, see your signs in the neighborhood. Good luck today at the open house, right? That's how you become omnipresent. Send out mailers. You got to send out mailers. It works. It really does. They have to see your face every single place they turn. All right. This is a great one, guys. Everybody, right, is so stuck in their phones, and you're all making video content, and I respect that, and you're trying to go viral. You don't need to go viral, right? Your boy's never gone viral, right? You don't need to go viral. What you have to do is you have to get the attention. And this is it. What did I start doing? A few years ago, we started for the 4th of July putting an American flag in people's lawns. Now, you may not like Brian Carp, but you sure love America. And the goal of this is just to get my name in every single person's mouth. I'm sure 80% of the people grab the flag out of the ground and say, oh, Brian Carp, and smile. And I'm sure the other 20% say, effing Brian Carp. But you want to know something? My name is in their mouth, and that's all that matters. Right? And some of you guys, right, if you want to dominate, you can't just do a block. You can't just do a neighborhood. Last year, I put out 10,000 American flags. Big ones. Big ones. Now you're saying, sales giant, I don't have any money, right? Well, your boy started with no money. So then just print out some pieces of paper that look like American flags and put them in everyone's door and wish them a happy 4th of July. Guys, it, it, doesn't, have to be, it doesn't have to be sexy, right? But it, it has to be frequent. That's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is you're not frequent enough, right? And you're always doing things, and they have to be perfect, right? They have to be perfect. No, they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be frequent. Let me tell you a story, right? Your boy's really into fitness, Okay? I know it doesn't look that way, but I'm into fitness. So would the workout regime work better if I worked out for 24 hours straight one time a month or if I worked out 30 minutes a day for 30 days? Can't hear you. 30 minutes a day for 30 days. Why? Because it's more frequent, 
right? So you guys who want to become a, a prospecting banshee, right, like your boy was, or a marketing or branding banshee, you can't just do it for 24 hours straight and think it's going to work. You got to do it every single day. You have to be more frequent with it. That's the biggest thing. The American flags, game changer. I thought I had this down pat. There we go. All right, here are the mailers. So guys, you cannot control Zillow, right? Can't control Zillow. Can't control Realtor. Realtor is literally out there every day. Say, Bri, you're the number one guy in the market. Uh, can we give you some leads? Throw us a little bit of money. Throw something up on your social. Guys, I won't do anything with Realtor. I won't do anything with Zillow. Penny savers? I had one of my friends who literally, different town, spent 50 Gs a year on penny saver ads, and then the oil company got the front cover over him because they gave more money. Your Aunt Sally, you can't control your Aunt Sally, right? She's gonna refer someone else, but what you can control is the narrative. So we created the CARP report. CARP report goes out to 10,000 houses, right? It's a big glossy, big, big, like eight by 10. I even now have sponsors who are doing the back of it. Next go around, it's turned into a book and people could buy advertising inside it. Guess what? Guess who's always on the front cover? Me. Guess who controls the narrative? Me, right? And we, we have fun with it. This one over here that you guys see over there, that one is the Where's Waldo of Brian. So where's Brian? They have to find Brian. Literally, I had 100 people send that to me circling 10 Brians. And what did they do? I gave them a little free gift. The other one was the back of my head, all right? Guys, you got to get the attention. Maybe it's a double click? There we go. All right, you're saying, sales giant, I don't have the money. I don't have the resources. What you do have, right here, knuckles. If you have knuckles, you have a multi-million dollar real estate business. I promise you that. You do. That's how I started it. Do you see those? Those are the cars. Those are the trucks. Guys, picture this. Every single day I came out of my house for the last 15 years, I had two choices. Was I going to get in the sales truck or the sales car? And if you look at the, 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 the ones where I was with Remax, right? The guys, the colors are off on them, right? One of my face, I have pimples over here because I don't know how to shave yet. I haven't gone through puberty, right? The other one, I, I, I don't tell anyone this. I think I spelled giant wrong, right? It doesn't matter. I took action and I got the attention, right? You guys are so worried about it, it looking good, but you have to get the attempts in, the attention. Stop worrying about looking cool. I don't care if I look cool, right? Go back to high school. Cool guys, cool girls, they go broke, right? I was never the cool guy, never the cool guy, but the family portfolio is pretty cool today, right? Financial freedom at 38 years old is pretty cool today. Jessica, my beautiful wife, the day that I wrapped the car, she A said, don't do it. She said, B, I'm never gonna go inside it. But I did it anyway, right? I felt it inside of me, this was the right move. I literally pull out of the wrapping place. This is before anyone wrapped, right? And I pull out and I look to the right and I look to the left and everyone's staring at me. I'm like, holy cow, I totally made a huge mistake here. Greatest thing I ever did in my business. Never stop prospecting, never stop marketing, never stop bringing leads in. 2019, December 31st, I call my work wife and she said, Brian, uh, Eric's house just sold. I said, how many houses is that? She said, 205 houses. It was around 12 noon, right? That year I made $2.2 .2 million, right? It's about 12 noon. What did I do? Did I go to the bar to go party? No, 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 no. Did I go like celebrate with the office team? Nah, it's not my style. Did I even go home? I didn't go home. You know what I did? Got out of my car in one of my hoods and I started prospecting. Just started knocking doors. Why? Because I didn't want the momentum to stop. Now, I might have sold you on that I'm superhuman or something to that capacity. But it's not true. It's not me. It, it's not me. It's what I built. It's the sales system that I built. This year, 2023, I have personally given out 100 listing opportunities to my team. Wow. Right? Listen, guys, I'm never going to leave this game 
of real estate, right? I love it too much. But I don't personally need to sell 300 houses. So now my team can go on a lot of appointments. I gave out 100 listings. They closed 90 of them. Why? Because it's my sales scripts. It's my flyers. It's my verbiage. It's my systems and processes that work. Leave you guys with one more story. Leave you with one more story. I'm almost done. I'm going to have to take the cane to pull me out. I, I love a good stage, all right? <laughs> you guys have to be ruthless with your business. Here's the story. This line is perfect, right? And then I'm, I'm off in five minutes. I am seven years old, so I don't remember this story. My mother told me this story. And we're in class, and they line me up right here, and they line someone else up right here. And they said, I want, I want you to picture that you're 1,000 feet in the air. And you guys have to cross sides, okay? But you, you can't pick them up and move them around, right? I was the first person to go. I just started walking, and I pushed them over and kept walking. At seven years old, right? You guys have to be ruthless. I will do anything legally and morally and ethically okay to win for my family. God's honest truth. You guys need to be more ruthless, you're worried about being cool, you're worried about being fancy, and you're not actually taking action. All right, I have an incredible sales course called The Illiterate Millionaire. There are 300 people across the United States that have gone through this and that are crushing it. Never have I ever did this before. For this event only, I'm giving it away basically, okay? So what do you get? What do you get? You get the Illiterate Millionaire's digital bl blueprint. What is that? That is 25 video modules of your boy standing on stage telling you exactly every piece of my business, right? What I do prospecting, what my schedule looks like, right? What am I doing seven days a week? What am I saying to for sale by owners? How am I winning the network game? $10,000 value. You get all my sales scripts. Every single one of my scripts. Exactly what I'm saying. Here, I'm going to give you guys a free one just to, just to wet your whistle. The free one is stop asking people when they're selling their house and ask them when they're interviewing the next real estate broker. You have every single one of my sales scripts in there. That's another, I can't even see because I'm old now, $5,000 value. This one, slam package. What's a slam package? You should never go on a listing appointment without them knowing who you are. A slam package is my baseball card. It gets delivered to their house. You wanna know what's in there? $2,500 value. Next one, my listing presentation. I filmed my entire listing presentation. It's inside the course. Guys, listing presentation shouldn't be different every single time. Listing presentation has a start, a middle, and an end, and it should work the exact same way every time, $5,000 value. My social media, literally, I'll teach you guys how I plan it, what platforms we are working on, what we're getting the best engagement on. That's all in there, $1,000 value. I have something really special, a bonus, three different prospecting techniques that you never heard of. I have one called dumpster diving how we get leads from dumpsters. Today and today only, it's 997. You guys have to think, if it somehow gets you one more listing a year, it's probably paid for itself 10 times over. I think potentially this could change your life. This is my life's work. I have two boys, this is my third son right here. Limited time for the people in attendance, they let me do this, you guys hit the QR code, jump online, and purchase it. That's all I got for you. Thank you.